Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from anthonymorganti.com and my new website, onlinephotographytraining.com. In this episode of Intermediate Photoshop, I'm going to teach you how to create a LUT file. Now, a LUT file is most commonly used for video. You would record your video very flat, and that's called a log file. And when you have this flat video, you would take it and enhance it with a LUT. And a LUT has all the information that is needed to color grade the film, add contrast, and just to, you know, make it look like it's processed video. Well, LUTs are starting to move into still photography, and you could use a LUT in a program like Luminar. And now with Lightroom, you could create a Lightroom profile and use a LUT with that profile. So in this video, I'm going to teach you how to create a LUT file and you'll get a better understanding of exactly what it is. And then in a future video, I'll show you how to create a Lightroom profile. And when we create that profile, you optionally can use a LUT file and I will use a LUT file to show you how it's done. Now, there's a lot of different ways you could create LUT files. Um, since this is Intermediate Photoshop, we're going to be using Photoshop, but there are other programs out there to create LUT files. We're going to use, as I mentioned, Photoshop. And as you can see, I have a very flat, plain image in Photoshop. So if you're going to create a LUT file for a landscape image, I suggest you use a landscape picture. If you're going to create a LUT for a portrait, use a portrait. So obviously, this is going to be something for a landscape image, and I have this relatively flat looking landscape image. Now I'm in the photography workspace and if you go up here and you click on this little icon over here there's a little drop down you can see those are all the different workspaces in, in um, Photoshop and as I mentioned I'm in this photography workspace and I mentioned that because mainly what you use to create LUTs are adjustment layers. And I have them all neatly packed right here, and that's where they are when you're in the photography workspace. Now, a LUT, unfortunately, won't recognize any filters. So if you have like sharpening filters or blurring filters or anything like that, the LUT's not going to see those. Also, brush strokes, gradients, any type of tool things you would do to enhance an image, the LUT won't see those. Really, all the LUT sees are adjustment layers. Now that might be limiting, but you, there is still a lot you could do with adjustment layers. So to start with, you might want to add contrast to an image. And there's a lot of different ways you could do that with adjustment layers. You could simply open this brightness contrast adjustment layer and there's a contrast slider right there. So you could add contrast easily right there. Next to that, is a levels adjustment layer and there's a drop down here with presets and you can see there's increased contrast one two and three so you could use this to increase contrast next to that is the curves adjustment layer and there's a drop down there i mean you could come into curves and just manually do it as well but sometimes it's just easier to use the presets that are in this drop down. So you could come in down here and you could do like linear contrast, adds a tiny bit of contrast, increase contrast, adds a little more, um, medium contrast, strong contrast. Now, if you don't want to just add contrast, there's other things you could do. Uh, if you want to just give yourself a negative, you could actually create a LUT that will do this using this curves adjustment layer. Um, cross-process your image. All this stuff you could do with this specific adjustment layer, the curves adjustment layer. We'll get rid of that temporarily. Next to that we just have exposure. So you could get contrast by moving the gamma correction slider to the right a little bit and you'll, you'll get some contrast. It also will darken the image a little bit too, which you may not want to do. One thing I do recommend when you do create LUTs, that you use an image that is properly exposed to begin with. Don't put an image that's, you know, too dark, too light, something like that. You want something that's properly exposed that will give you uh, your LUT the ability to be used on most images then. So we're going to get rid of that one. Uh, next to that is vibrance and saturation. So that's another thing you might want to do is add some vibrance and saturation. Now, the next group will really affect the colors of your image, especially this one, the hue saturation adjustment layer. 
With this one, you could do major color shifts. And just to really demonstrate the power of a LUT, we're going to do some major color shifts with this image. What you're going to do is go down to where it says Master and pick a color that is prominent in your scene. Since I'm doing a LUT for landscape images and this LUT is going to shift a lot of colors, this is a good image. It has a lot of green in it. Well, if you have a lot of green grass, the greens here will not affect the image as much as yellows. So we're going to choose yellows and then you could go to the hue slider and I could move it and you could see how it's changing the color of the grass. So we could really dial in and a really off the wall color with this. Then we could affect the saturation and how bright that is as well with those sliders there. Then you could do it for all the different colors in your image. We'll go up and now we'll affect the sky, which is blues and cyan will affect the sky as well. Also, you could pick a color like blues and then you could come down here and use this add or subtract dropper to add or remove things from the range of colors that these sliders will affect. Uh, you could just use the eyedropper tool to pick the color exactly as well. So I could pick this sky color here and you could see how it gives me a specific range of colors that these sliders will now affect. So as I move the hue slider around, it really is affecting the hue of the, uh, the sky mainly. So I could come in here with saturation and make it darker. So we really could come in here and play with this. No, no, we're just going to make it kind of off the wall weird. All right, so something like that. So let's say for the sake of this demonstration that I'm done with this hue saturation slider. You could do these other ones too. There's color balance where you could affect uh, how the shadows, midtones, and highlights reflect the colors. So you could, uh, you know, uh, basically adjust the red, greens, and blues in the image to be more towards cyan, magenta, and yellow. Uh, so like the blues in this image, I could move this slider. If I move it towards blue, I'll make the blue bluer. If I move it to the left, I make the blue more yellow. So you could see that these are subtractive complementary colors. The subtractive compl complementary color of red is cyan. To green is magenta and to blue is yellow. So that's how those work. So you could do that and you could tweak your image with this as well. We won't for this one. Uh, to the right of that, if you're doing a black and white image, you could click the black and white adjustment layer and you could affect the mix directly. Now I could go through these one by one by one, but I think really what, um, what you should do is just experiment with it yourself and just see uh, what these do and how you could um, really affect your image. So I have two on there now. I have the vibrance and the use saturation. So let's add some contrast. I'll use curves for that. That's usually what I prefer. And we'll try medium contrast and then we'll try strong contrast. All right, let's go with uh, medium contrast. So I very quickly added these three adjustment layers and our original image was looking like that. And using three adjustment layers, we created this monstrosity. But I want to recreate now a LUT for this. So to do that, go up to the top file menu, down to export, then color lookup tables. And you'll come up with this. Now. There's grid points. Typically, you could just use 64. To me, that's what I always create my LUTs at, 64, and they work for everything and they look great. You could try to increase the grid points, which will give you a more refined looking LUT. But generally speaking, I found that you won't see the difference, at least with still photography. So experiment here as well. You could have the drop down tune. You could go to poor, low, medium, high, and maximum. And as I mentioned, high 64 works fine. Now, we have a number of different formats. Different formatted types of formats of LUTs will work in various programs differently. For like Adobe stuff, it's usually cube. So it will end with dot cube at the end. Um, some other programs, some other video processing programs might use dot 3DL or dot CSP or something else. And then you could create all of those at once. And you'll actually have 
four different LUTs where you save it. You'll create all four of them. Um, I'm just going to create the one for this demonstration, the cube file, because that's the more common one today. Now what you're going to do is where it says description, change the name. Even though that's showing you know, the actual raw file I'm using for this image, change this because this will get written inside of the LUT. And when you load the LUT into different types of um, programs, it's going to show this as the name and you'd be better off changing it right here. So I'm just going to change it to off the wall color. Okay, just like that and then click OK. Then what it's going to do, it's going to ask you where to save it. Now, even though we're creating a .cube file, it's showing .lut. Just ignore that because it's not going to be saved as .lut. It's misleading you. So I'm going to save it as off the wall color. And I'm going to save it to my desktop, and we're going to click Save. And it just takes a second and it created the LUT. Now what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of all of these, these adjustment layers. So we're back to our original image. And I'm going to minimize this for a second. And there's our raw file right there. But here is our .cube file. You see how it didn't save it as .lut. It saved it, it, saved it as .cube. And if I would have checked all four of those boxes, the .3dl box, and all the other two, it would have saved four LUTs here on my desktop. So we have this .cube file. Now with, you know, if you're using Premiere Pro, Final Cut Pro, you could um, load or any other video processing program that uses LUTs and will allow the .cube format. You could then load your video in there and then color grade it just like we did and get all that weird color grass and sky by using this .cube file. If you're using, let's say, a program like Luminar 2018 or uh, Lightroom and you're going to be creating profiles, which we're going to do in our next video, you could use this .cube program. Or if you're in Photoshop and you just want to get that look back, you could go right here and there's an adjustment layer called Color Lookup. Click on that and this is allowing you to put a LUT on your image. So we're going to go to Load a 3D LUT. And then it opens up and there's some that come with Photoshop, but we're just going to click there. And now it's going to ask us to navigate to where the LUT is. It's on my desktop. It's right there off the wall, color.cube. As soon as I click open, you'll see it applies the LUT to the image. And it is exactly what we did with adjustment layers, as you could see. And it's just one adjustment layer, color lookup. So that's how you create a LUT, a lookup table. Probably easier than you thought it was. I know I thought it was very difficult until I actually learned how to do it a long time ago. And it turns out to be very easy. There's so much you could do with it. So you could experiment and create a lot of different LUTs. In a future video, I'm going to show you how to create a Lightroom profile. And in that profile, you're, you have the option of using a LUT. And we will. We'll use a LUT with our Lightroom profile that we'll be creating in that future video. So that's it for this video. Thank you, everyone that watches my videos. I truly do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.